Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make doors. So closed doors, locked doors and also um, weak walls that can be open with explosions. Uh, chapter 19 Doors. So let's make a temple like this and with the music of the Dark World Dungeon because it's nice. So for this example, we'll make two rooms, very standard usual rooms, and a door between them. So, first, you, you use normal tiles to allow the player to pass from one room to another. Like this, and maybe like this. And we also need this one, like that to the high layer, but behind this. It's just to make sure that um, since this part part is above the player, when um, the, sp the sprite of the player is larger um, than, than the passage between the rooms, you don't want the sword or the shield or any part of the player sprite to um, to appear here. So like this. And then why <laughs> let's allow the player of course to traverse the wall with some floor here, but don't allow to get behind um, here, okay? So okay, now we have uh, just tiles to make a normal open door. Nothing dynamic yet, but we can. We should already try that. No, game manager. Chapter nineteen. Okay. Okay, so it works nice. You can traverse the wall between both rooms, but this is nothing new. And then let's make a door. So doors are created with this icon, create door. You can um, set up a lot of properties, but the most important one is the sprite. Uh, we have in s in the Zelda Link to the Past resource pack all usual doors of a Link to the Past. So this is a sprite of closed door, a door that can only be opened by a mechanism, small key door, so of course it will be here, big key door, here I'm just choosing the sprite, so the graphics, but I haven't defined anything about how to open them. The weak wall, oops. Of course for weak walls you, you, will, you will not use the, this kind of tiles behind. Very weak wall, this one, and weak block, so this is more exactly a block that can be blasted with an explosion. It doesn't exist actually in the Link to the Past. But I, I made this for Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX. So maybe it shouldn't be in the resource pack. Anyway, let's first make a normal door that can be open with only um, your script. And then you choose the 
direction of your door. So it's the direction in a room. This one is up and for this one you would choose down. Okay. All sprites can be edited from the sprite editor here and doors are defined here. Normal door. The normal door is this one. So doors uh, sprite doors have the particularity to change with the tileset. These are tileset dependent sprites. So in the sprite editor you can choose any tileset for the displaying for this displaying but at run at runtime um, it will of course be the tileset of the current map that will be applied to your door. And this this image here is um, your tileset um, dot entities dot png. So in our case, dungeon gray brown dot entities dot png. Remember, this one is the tileset file for static tiles, and this one is for sprites that depend on the tileset. So it's organized the same in all tilesets. You can also see this here, cave, dungeon blue, house. Of course the light world is very different so we don't have all these doors. Still we have the weak wall and the closed door that can be used. Anyway, um, so this is a closed door that can be opened with a some kind of mechanism. So let's do it. Let's do a button and uh, let's call it button <laughs> with the switch sprite and the switch sound. Oops. So you can watch the chapter about uh, switches to learn this, but it's not very complicated. Okay, so I have, I have a switch that does nothing. Let's open our script. Our s the switch is called button, so button on activated. Re remember this function on activated is called when the when the switch is activated. And when the switch is activated, we want to open those two doors. So we can give a name, for example, door A. Imagine that in a dungeon you have door A, door B, door C. And this one will also be called door A, so OK. But since name must be unique, the editor automatically adds uh, a numbered prefix to it. But it's OK save and then you can actually call a single function open doors and put the prefix of, of all doors to open so open doors door A and this will actually open both of them okay good and if you are very careful, maybe you noticed that there is a very f uh, fast animation of the door opening. It doesn't open instantly. There is an intermediate frame of the sprite. This is defined in the sprite. Um, so doors I have three animations closed, closing and opening. <laughs> closing and opening are optional. If you don't define them then your door will open instantly. Okay, so this is a detail. Um, so okay, this is a, a standard closed door. 
let's put it here and now let's make another one but with another type of um, opening method copy paste so this one will be door B maybe with opening me method um, I can show you, show you this this one here I can open it's very simple let's call this door B okay And with hero can open, you have to press the action command, so the spacebar by default. And it opens with a sound. Um, oops. Of course I only open this one. But to connect both of them, um, you can do it in a script. Or if your door is saved, there is a very simple way. Um, let's say this door is saved in the variable in the save game variable chapter 19 door B and if this one has the same save game variable then when the first one gets open the save game variable variable is set to true and this one detects that its own save game variable has changed and updates accordingly so okay it works um, you can also say that the door can open but uh, it requires a save game variable of your choice to be defined and different from zero and different from false and different <coughs> from an empty string um, you can also decide that the hero can open the door if and only if and only if he has got some equipment item that you specify here. So maybe we should make a key item for this example, but you get the idea. And if you check this option, then the item will be removed when opening the door. Removed or um, decremented if it is an item that has an amount. So we will do that someday to implement small keys and a counter of small keys. And finally you can also choose a dialogue to, to show when the player tries to open the door but fails. For example, you don't have the key. Something like that. Okay, and, and um, so for the small keys, you would probably, or for the big key, you would probably choose this one, this sprite, and here needs equipment item, and here choose the big key of the current dungeon, for example. Um, if I do it with the sword, uh, just to show you, maybe. <laughs> Um, and the same for this one. Ekma item sword. Let's say that the sword can be used as a key. It's compli completely stupid, but it's just an example. Oh, by the way, chests have exactly the same settings than doors. You can also um, open them directly or require a self game variable or an equipment item. It's useful for big chests. Okay, so it doesn't work. And if I have the sword, it works. The sword is a key. The sword is now officially a key. Okay, and let's also try to make a weak wall. So the sprite weak wall, save the draw state, 
it will be door C. So weak walls can very easily be implemented in this engine with uh, a door. A weak wall is just a door that has the opening method explosion. Chapter 19 Weak Wall. Okay. And copy paste for this one down. And I also need this. Okay. So the only problem by the way, we have a lot of doors here. Let's use only one time this style here, okay. Um, of course we don't have the bombs for now in this tutorial. We will do the bombs later. So instead we will uh, simulate an explosion when we press the button, okay. So it's very easy to do that. Create explosion when the button is activated and it will be the same result as a bomb. An explosion will be in uh, 232 to 88. Coordinates are here. Okay. And the layer. So you can read the documentation to see how to create an entity and what parameters exactly exactly you can pass. They depend on the entity and the type of entity you create. But for an explosion, I think all you can choose is uh, the position, coordinates, and the layer. The layer is one because it's the intermediate layer. The door is on the intermediate layer. So, zero, one, two. Okay. So, let's say that this code replaces the bombs. Okay. And it worked. <laughs> okay, the door disappeared. It disappeared when the explosion, when it detected it, uh, a collision with an explosion. So what we forgot to do is make uh, um, the passage here. So let's do this with the appropriate tiles. These are the tiles for Blasted walls and this one. Normally, all of this is compa compatible with all inside tile sets. So, cave, dungeon blue, dungeon gray blue, dungeon gray brown, and I will do more and more tile sets later the eyes. So, of course the weak wall looks weird in the <coughs> editor in all die sets because I, ha I have at the same time the closed one and the open one behind. And how do you, how can we actually hide all these four tiles when the door when the weak wall is closed. To do this, there is a trick. Um, the rule is that all tiles that have the same name as a door, but with a suffix, uh, with the suffix underscore um, closed, are displayed while the door is closed. And all tiles that are that have the same suffix than a um, prefix, sorry, than a door, 
and with the suffix uh, open are displayed when the door is open. So, how can we give a name to a tile? That's not possible. If you watched chapter 18, you know that you have to use a dynamic tile here. So, let's convert all of these to dynamic tiles. In the editor version 1.4, you can convert several dynamic several tiles uh, at the same time. <coughs> Bring to front. Bring to front. Okay, and so door C. I want this tile to be shown only when the door is open. So door C open. And it doesn't matter whether if you check this visibility setting here because now that the tile has the same name as a door with either open or closed after the name of the door um, it will be entirely managed by the, the state of the door automatically so let's call all of them door C open as usual, the, the editor adds some prefix, uh, some suffix, sorry. <laughs> but it still works. Okay, so that's it. You don't have to make more uh, script scripting to update sometimes. A according to the state of a door. You just have to give them the appropriate name. Yes, it works. Good. Uh, maybe you want to play a sound when the explosion is triggered. Or maybe two sounds. Explosion. And since the door and when the door opens actually the weak wall opens on opened you will play the sound da -da 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 -da. great okay you know how to make a weak wall. That's good. Oh, by the way, last detail. When a door has the weak wall opening method, you also have this sound. And this is the sound on normal obstacles, normal walls and normal doors. Okay, good. So that's it for this episode. Um, so there are two tricks for doors. Um, the first one is to use um, the open doors method of the map to open several doors that have the same prefix at once. This is very useful for doors that uh, should be open with mechanisms. And the second trick is to make dynamic tiles that have the same name of the uh, same name as as a door followed by underscore closed or underscore um, open so that these style these styles automatically update their their state uh, with the state of the door. Okay, uh, I hope this was clear, don't hesitate uh, if you have questions and likes are always appreciated. Thank you, goodbye.